All right, so last time we created our player class, and then we called on it a couple times to go ahead and see about multiple instances of it. We're going to take more advantage of classes today and figure out larger structure and more advanced structures we can use with it. What we're going to see over the, co over the rest of these videos is that there's actually a huge number of ways that classes can be used. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, we have a player class. Let's add another class to this. I'm going to go right-click on GUI test, the project, and add class. This class will be called player stats. Uh, stats is commonly short for statistics. Statistics usually refer to information over time, how it changes over time, um, and how it's dealt with in large quantities. So it's not necessarily the best number, the best term for moder for video games to refer to a role-playing game. But the point is, is that in the earlier systems that were created, that was the word that was chosen to be used for it. So it's one of the most commonly accepted terms for the list of metrics about a player. But basically it's player metrics, measurable information. All right, so player stats. And inside it, we are going to have several integers. These are all numeric fields that are common for players. So I'm just going to speed through these. All right, so these are the variables that I'm going to be using for player stats. We have hit points or health. We have strength, magic, intelligence, speed. There's a lot of others you might use like wisdom, charisma, agility, dexterity. I recommend against the term dexterity. It likes to get used in a lot of things, but dexterity would be being able to juggle. But the fact that you are dexterous in juggling does not mean that you are dexterous in wielding a sword, which is usually how it tries to be applied as this universal thing for being able to apply a movement skill to everything. Um, so usually it's things, and usually dexterity also gets applied more like speed in a game anyway, or agility. All right, so for dex, for here are the player stats that we have. Now let's actually apply them to our player. I'm going to go into our player class and we have a couple of variables here. I'm going to add another one. Public 
player stats minimum equals new. And again, public player stats maximum equals new player stats. So this is just like the creating a new instance of the player. We created it uh, player p1. So player p1 equals new player. In this case, it's player stats minimum equals new player stats. And player stats maximum, which is the variable name, equals new player stats. So these are both instances of player stats. And for every time we create a new instance of player, it will also come along with its own two instances of minimum and maximum. So if I go back into the form one design and go into my test player, I'm just going to show you this part here, but we'll make a better editor for this. If I type in P1 and hit dot, I now have name, description, but also minimum and maximum, which also extend out into getting all of the health variables, the intelligence, magic, all of those statistics and metrics we have about the player. Um, I'm not going to use those right now. I have a better idea for that. Instead, I'm going to build an actual editor for the player. So let me go into the, to do this, we need an actual form. It's going to be a whole new form that does this. Uh, so let's go ahead and right click on GUI test, add, and we're going to say Windows form. So that Windows form, let me cancel that, I did that kind of task, add Windows form. So I right click on the project, click add, and then Windows form. This gives us a whole new form, which I'm going to call it FRM Player Editor, no spaces, and hit Add. So this is a whole new form. We, I can double click on Form 1 and I've got all these buttons in it. I can double click on this FRM Player Editor and I've got a blank screen. We can see it's a, an entirely different form. In fact, let's go ahead and try this out. Remember how I was saying that the forms are also classes? and we, we were able to create lots of instances of a class? Well, I'm going to double click on Form 1 and let's see, I will bring up, let's add another button, that button into view, and I'm going to call it Edit Player. And at the top, I'm going to change its name to Edit Player. And then double click on the button. So I'm in edit player underscore click. Now, when we wanted to create a new instance of player, we said player p1, and then set it to equal a new player. We're going to do the same thing, except with frm player editor. We're going to say frm player editor, and I'll just call it lowercase form, equals new frm player editor. Same structure. Here's the type, here's the type, here's the variable name we're creating, here's the variable name we're creating, equals new, equals new, we're creating a new instance of this and we're setting a, a variable to equal it, and then our constructor. This is called a constructor method, the one where it just has the object with the two parentheses right afterwards. We haven't actually created constructor methods, that's something we'll get into, uh, but by default that's what these are referred to as, the constructor of the object. Okay, so we've created our new form. Now form has a method in it called show. So I'll go ahead and just run this as is. These two lines, play, move this over, I click edit player, and it started my new form. Now what's also interesting is I can create multiple instances of these. Every time I click this, it'll create a new one. And they're all their own different sizes. They're all their own forms. If I look in here, I see FRM player editor, FRM player editor, FRM player editor. They're all showing up in here. And then, of course, form one. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting, if I close one of these, just to point out, if I close one of these, the program still runs, but even though I have these other two forms going, if I close my original form, this first one that starts up, if I close that, 
it kills the entire program. That's something important to remember. A lot of times people will use a, what's called a splash screen, a little graphic or something that shows up right as the program is loading and it's loading all the information about files or telling you about its new programs and what it can do. Uh, and then they just hide it. They make it invisible. So the, pro the form is still running. All right.